All right, gents, we've had a bunch of requests from different viewers. They want to know how to build a sniper position or a sniper shooting position. All right, so step one is have a sniper. All right, so we're going to bring Keith down in here. Now, the key to accuracy is consistency. So you want to make sure you're building this position the same every time. Now, the reason why you want it to be consistent all the time is this rifle is going to recoil back into the shooter. Now that pressure back into the shooter needs to be the same every time. Now there are some people that will say you've got to load the bipod force forward. Now if, if, that's, uh, if that's how you do it, um, that's fine on flat uh, terrain where you can really dig the bipod in on the ground. Now if you're on a place that's slippery, they actually make um, shooting mats uh, gun bags that have got the, the small uh, strap that goes forward, you can hook to the legs of your bipod and you can actually really torque that thing in tight onto the shoulder of your shooter. Um, where it's normally not a big deal on flat terrain like this, when you start shooting uh, downhill or like on the, the slope of a roof, it's really hard to uh, load that bipod and it's important because it needs to be the same every time. When this gun goes off, you've got that, that big shock wave, all those vibrations that run through it. it. Runs all the way down, the harmonics go out, they go down through the bipod legs into the ground. All right, so those harmonics, they're important. When that shock wave goes down through this gun, all right, it goes down through the bipod into the ground, it needs to be the same every time. So like when I'm shooting off of a wall, what I will do is I will still sit my bipod legs so the feet are sitting on the wall, not the stock. Right, a lot of people say don't touch the barrel. I say don't even touch the stock. Have the feet of my bipod there. That way my shock waves, my harmonics, they're used to going through the gun, down the bipod legs. It's the same thing. They go through the gun, down the bipod legs, and the end of my legs are what are touching the wall. That makes any sense to you. All right, so that's loading the bipod because you got to remember accuracy is consistency. Now, when you when the shooter starts building his body, his position behind this, he wants uh, the stock. Uh, the gun's been sized for him, so he's got the stock up in the pocket of his shoulder. All right, if you'll swing around over here, you'll be able to see uh, he's not holding one hand up front and one hand in the back. He's got his. Uh, his uh, firing hand on the firing controls. He's got, the, uh, he's got the safety up here. He's got his finger up on the trigger. He's using his sandbag and his support hand is on the back. He's holding up the back of the gun. That's what we would call a sniper hold. If he was doing it without a sandbag, he'd actually grab that bicep and by squeezing and lowering it, he's actually raising and lowering the back of that gun. Minute amount, not very much at all. Now, this, he's gonna relax. He's gonna close his eyes. When he opens his eyes, he should be looking straight through that sight, straight through the scope, right at the target. If he's not, then he needs to move, right? Now, instead of just wiggling left and right to get it in there, if it's a bold correction, he does bold corrections by moving the front of the gun left or right. If he needs to go up or down, bold corrections are done with the front of the gun, uh, adjusting the bipod up and down, right? Minute adjustments are done in the back. If you start trying to do large adjustments in the back by bringing elbows in and out, what you're doing is you're creating a variable. You're no longer consistent to how you always do things. You should always try to have the back of the gun, elbows, everything as consistent as possible all the time. All right, so supporting the back of the gun, he's using a sandbag right here, and all he's got to do is squeeze that sandbag a little bit. That's going to raise the back of the gun, lower those crosshairs. All right, he needs to lower it down a little bit. He relaxes that hand. Now, if you're using a monopod like the, um, the AccuShot or, you know, the Barrett, uh, the Accuracy International makes them also, yeah, you can, you can work it that way. Small movements left to right are fine, but don't be muscling that crosshair is left or right because as soon as you relax, when you fire, bang, the body relaxes, it's gonna to wanna to go back to that natural point of aim. Once you've got it all adjusted, again, close your eyes, relax. And when you open your eyes back up, you should be looking straight through the scope on the bullseye, right? Now, any other fine movements left or right, that's for your windage calls. All right, that's for your holds given to you by the spotter. If you're already having to hold and muscle it over to get on the target, 
How about if that wind call makes you have to go even further? No, that's not how you do it. Now, after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up the rest of the body behind the gun. We've got his head mounted on the gun, his elbows from the, from the scapula up. He is set, loaded where he needs to be. Now what he's gonna do is gonna set his body up behind it. Two schools of thought. Some guys like to actually lay down flat. Uh, the old school, you'd actually kick the one knee up. And what that does is it cants the pelvis a little, actually lifts the side of the chest cavity off the ground a little bit, allows you to breathe a little better. Um, but mostly what we're using now is we lay flat. His spine is completely straight. You notice he's got his heels down. A lot of guys don't even realize they're doing it, but when they've got that one foot up, put both feet up for me. What they'll do is they'll, they'll start shaking one foot. And what that does, when that one foot's wiggling, it starts moving his pelvic girdle, which in turn moves the spine, which moves uh, the scapula. And the next thing you know, he's moving those crosshairs off a target. Completely take it out of the equation, lay those heels flat. All right now, once he's laid in, he's solid, he's ready to go. We're ready to start uh, the next piece of our equation here, which is we're gonna bring that spotter on in. I'm going to bring the spotter in. Now, the spotter is not going to move our shooter at all. He has got to work around the shooter. Now, he's going to, you're going to notice he's going to want to lay in close. The reason why he's trying to lay in close is so that they can whisper. Remember, this is a sniper team. This is not a precision rifle team. Precision rifle teams, you can put spotting scopes all up in the air and whatever. The spotter, though, he needs to be as he needs to have his spotting scope as close to bore of the rifle, so that makes it easier for him to see trace. All right now, if you've got room behind him, you can actually get between his legs and be looking up here. All right, the berm won't allow us to do that right now. All right, so he's laying on this side right here. He's got the spotting scope. You notice. Their heads are only about three feet apart. What that allows them to do is he doesn't have to yell, all right, 3.2 mils high. He doesn't have to do that. He can whisper it. He can say, all right, elevation 3.2 mils, left 1.2 mils, all right? Nice and quiet, all right? So spotter sets in, a sniper sets in, then we bring our spotter in. Now he has got to be close. And the most important thing is he has got to be able to see trace. So you want to get this spotting scope as close to the bore line as possible. He's going to set it up. What he's looking for is that blur rising up in that, in that spotting scope, dropping down into the target. He's got to be able to do that, and he can talk quietly. Gents, that's it. It's not about just building the sniper. It's about getting that spotter in there also. Remember, the key to accuracy is consistency. Set this up the same every time and uh, have that same pressure pulling the gun in whether you're using a strap whether you're loading the bipod whatever it is i don't care what technique you use but it has to be the same every time if you don't you'll be you'll be great at banging steel at 300 meters if that's all you want that's fine but if you want to be reaching out there at a mile mile and a half you've got to be consistent anyways gents that's it this is how you build a sniper position if you got any questions and comments, you know the deal. Be sure to leave them below. And if you want to support Tactical Rifleman, uh, be sure to click the button at the end of the video and uh, you can pick up some of the uh, cool swag we've got for you. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything. If you like the shirt that we're wearing in the video, you can get it in our store.